Craig Studnicki from Related ISG, welcoming you to our next edition of the Insider Series. Today, we're with a young man from New York City, Chris Uyoa. Yeah, there you go. I didn't do that, did it. I? No. Chris Uyoa. Uyoa. Originally from Brooklyn, spent a little time on Staten Island, but he's living like me, a transplant from the Northeast. He's living here now and he's loving it. And yeah, Chris, thank you for well, having me. Welcome to the Insider Series. It. Thank no, you. No, no, thank you for being with us. Yeah, today, absolutely. Um, I I think I told you this before, but you know, there's over 400 realtors that work for Related ISG. Right. We don't get a chance to see each other very much. There's not going to be a Christmas party this year because of Corona, right. social distancing. So it, it 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 puts even more importance on the Insider Series interviews. It gives your colleagues in related ISG, for that matter, even your colleagues outside of the right. ISG that you kind of compete with or collaborate with on some sales, a little bit more about you and a little bit more about why you like Miami so much and why you like real estate so much. So we're going to explore a little bit of that right now. Sure. Okay. So um, I, I originally got into real estate, I guess, back in fifth, when I was 15, 16 years old, I read a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it, and it kind of introduced me to the concept of wealth and, and wealth building. So, that so 15 was, and 16, though, you're living in New York, New York City. City. Right, I was in and high school. You're in high school, yeah. you're going to college. Going to college. You're reading this book. Yeah, someone gave me this book. I, I, I got hooked, you know, I read it, and it, it, it opened my eyes. It made me look at things from a different lens. Um, I didn't know I wanted to, I was going to get into sales. I just knew I was, something in real estate was, you know, going to be what I was going to do. Um, and yet your first job out of college was not real estate, was it? Or was it? Well, well yeah. I guess, I mean, I've had uh, jobs, but my first job out of college, it, it was real estate. And then I got a, a corporate job, which kind of, I, I, I stayed with them for a few years. In sales? Yeah. So I think I, you said I, a fuel company? Yeah, it's a fuel company, a okay. local fuel company in South Florida. And so they, they put you through some training? They put me through some training. I was out in the field, so it was, it was my type of, it wasn't an office job per se. I managed the territory, so I was on my own. I just had to report you know, to my boss at the end of the week. And mm -hmm. Kind of gave me that corporate structure of, uh, you know, that, that is needed in the real estate world as, you know, independent contract. We work on our own, essentially. Sure. So, uh, well, it also improves your people skills a little bit, too, right. particularly in the corporate environment. Absolutely. These are a bit structured, for sure. rigid, political, for sure. all of those things. Right. And you need to navigate through all that stuff. For sure. Yeah. I, you know, and, I, and I, when I first started in real estate in New York, I was in college, and it was my first uh, moment of realization of how demanding this, this job could be and, and this industry in general. Especially in New York City, I'm sure you know. Well, you told me before the before we started, you used to work for City Habitat. Right, City Habitat. Now that's a company that every time I went to their offices in Manhattan, I was blown away by the activity. There must have been 30 or 40 agents at any given time in their offices. Right. Everyone looks like they're working on three or four deals at the same time. Right. The, the office was just buzzing. Yeah, they had a great system. Made me miss New York a little bit. Yeah. Except I always visited them in February. You no, know? So, that's you know, not the no, The offices are warm and stuffy. Right, right. You know, you're outside, you're freezing cold, you're getting a cab is impossible. I don't miss that. I'll yeah. tell you the exactly. <laughs> I don't miss that. Um, so, yeah, so I, I ended up moving <coughs> to Florida after college to Miami uh, because while I was... And what up, year was that? Uh, 2015. Okay. Uh, so while I was up in New New York I was weighing out my options do I want to stay in New York at the time you couldn't drag me out of New York I, I you know I love New York for what it was I was Yankee a fan diehard Yankee fan mm -hmm. um, so you know I started studying the market in, in Miami I came across this, uh, this ISG world market report back in 2015 oh, okay. and 16 my oh. mother was a real estate agent here so she said hey if you want you know this is some stuff I got Read it, you know. So your mother gave us a thumbs up on our Miami. Report. She did, she did, and I would come visit her. And I remember one time I came to visit her. It was during one of the market report, uh, you know, presentations. presentations. Oh, okay. So I, I attended it, and uh, a guy I was up on stage sounded like he was from Jersey. I'm like, yeah, oh, this guy sounds like. I think I know that guy. I think I know that great guy. guy. Yeah, great guy. <laughs> so uh, it, you know, it introduced me to the Miami market, and and I I saw at the time the opportunity that Miami had. Being from New York, in my eyes, it was a baby New York. And the growth that you know these reports and the information that these reports would give us, I was you know, I packed my bags and I came down here. Wow. Yeah. So I came down here and I, and I just, boom straight. And now you're in real estate again. Boom. Yeah. Now I'm in real estate again uh, for a short time at Weikert. Okay. Yeah. A Jersey company. Jersey company. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then um, and then I got pulled out of it by getting offered a great position at a at a, that corporation at the corporate right. you know. Um, spent three years there, and uh, and I can't, I hit a, a crossroad where I was trying to do real estate also part time, you know, but it, it wasn't 
working out because at the time, if, you, if I wanted to grow, I had to pick one or the other. So who recruited you into related ISG? Um, really, I, myself. I, oh. I actually, yeah. So there was an office in Edgewater. Trust where, me, this is very unusual. Yeah, Almost I know. Everybody Alex. <laughs> gets recruited by either Alex McDowell, right. Carolina Gertz, right. Liz Lopez, occasionally me, right. but occasionally. Right. You're saying, no, I, I, I knocked came, on the door. Right. And asked I, for I a job. came, and I'll tell you why is, is because the name related, when I would come down, I would go to some, I would see all these new construction buildings, and I would see related over this name just kept coming up. Then the market report, ISG World. And it just, you know, the name just stuck in my head for years. And okay. when I moved to Edgewater. So the brainwashing work. Yeah, it worked, <laughs> right. And the colors, Yankee blue. Yeah, I mean, exactly, yeah, <laughs> you can go wrong. Yeah. So then I moved to Edgewater and there was an office that was close by and I was like, perfect, let me hang my license with them, you know, do part-time. And then I realized part-time in this industry is not, is, is, it's not feasible. It's not. It's it not. either grabs you or it doesn't, this business, right? right? right. It grabs you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And part time? No, no way. way. No way. So I had to make the decision leave a corporate job that, I mean, benefits, salary, bonus, commission, you know, all that. It works. And uh, I take, took the leap back into real estate because I knew that that's something I was actually passionate about. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was a hard decision, but I'm happy I did it. I'm that's happy awesome. I did it. Yeah. Which office do you work at? Edgewater. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you work now under Liz Lopez. Right, right, right. Albert was my, I, you, I guess you could say Albert recruited me because I went to speak to him and then he convinced me to really put my license there. He's a good man. Yeah. We, we miss him. He went yeah. to uh, work for his, yeah, his in-laws. He was great. Guys. Yeah. Right. He was great. Um, but great, great, great guy. Let's talk about, I'm going to go a little out of order. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So a Albert Carollo was, uh, was a young man I met six, seven years ago. Uh, he fell in love with Christina Pappas. The Pappas family owns Kai's. He's now working for Kai's. Right. It hurts when you lose a, a, a senior executive, but it really hurts when you lose anybody that you really like and you spend time and that you, you invest time and effort in and you, make, right. and you help polish their act and they become real estate superstars. I have no doubt, Chris, that with your energy and your natural charisma that you've been called by some of our competitors Maybe you ought to consider this. Maybe you ought to consider that. But when you joined Related ISG, Albert made some promises. You, you met, I'm sure you spent time with Alex Vidal. Yes. And now you're spending a lot of time with Liz Lopez. And they made certain promises about what makes Related ISG different from our competitors here in South Florida. Um, you've been here for a short time, but you stay. You resist the temptation right. from our competitors to, to see if the grass is greener on the other side. Right. Why do you stay? Um, I think one of the main reasons is why I was attracted to Related to begin with is, is the amount of intel and data that we, you guys provide. I don't know who you have sitting back there going through all these numbers, but when I go through these market reports, I, I, that's a lot, of, a lot of information that's very useful. And I think it's probably one of the most powerful tools that an agent can have. Um, so well, I'm glad to hear you say that. By the way, the information, yes, it's compiled uh, by one or two people. Right. One, one young lady named Athena Rosano who's been with us for about 15 years. She knows the drill, but I get the ideas of what kind of data you need right. from you. Right. I just listen. Yeah. I listen to agents, you know, maybe complain about a deal that, God, if only I had known X, Y, or Z, I think I could have closed that deal. Right. You hear enough of that, and that's what I, Athena researches for us. Right. that we provide to you to help you get more listings Absolutely. and and or and or close more sales right because I, I anybody a lot of people could put on a nice suit have a little bit of charisma and, and you know try to do this and i'm sure they'll be somewhat successful but when you have information that's real information i think that adds a, a layer to the to your business that a lot of people don't have um, well you know actually you could end up one day being a great recruiter for our company because, <laughs> i mean you know, your mom uh yeah. you were telling me she works for sotheby's right yes so yeah. she she but yes yeah, she very much values the the uh, related isg miami report absolutely um and she told you to take a look at this a while ago now yeah. you you now getting the benefit of real-time updates right. of that and you see how it how it, yeah. it benefits uh yeah it's, it's, and especially because a lot of my clientele are new yorkers and you know, for the, the ones that are not familiar with the market, for me to be able to p compile information for them, you know, when they, they don't know about Brickle and I'm, hey, one out of every three condos being sold in South Florida is in Brickle, then their eyes, what do you mean? What's this Brickle thing, I, you know? So it, it's, it's good, it definitely adds a, a big tool. You just touched on something I wanted to ask you. So 2020, we know what, what this year's been yeah. for everybody. It's, it's uh, you know, hopefully it, it will reach a point where it will become funny. Um, right. 
It wasn't so funny six, nine months ago, particularly when we were in quarantine. But what, what did you see different this year? Because you, you've written some real estate sales. You've done okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you just said, my New Yorkers. Right. Are most of your clients from New York? Are most of them looking for houses? Are they looking for condos? And how do you think all of this is going to spin off into 2021? Your colleagues want to hear from Chris. So I, I've dealt with a lot of investors from New York. Uh, that have 1031 a lot of their properties okay. to come down here because tax purposes, et cetera, et cetera. I think that when I first moved down here, I saw the condos being built up and I, you know, I was thinking to myself, wow, the industries, where, where are they? Now you're starting to see companies move down here and bring business and bring employees making six figures. BlackRock just announced that they're opening in Brickell or yeah. downtown. They're right. looking for space down there. Mm -hmm. Spotify is opening offices in Wynwood. Carl Icahn's opening his Carl office in Sunny Isles. Sunny Isles. Right. Yeah. So all of this <laughs> stuff, you know, and, and I think COVID accelerated our our market. I really, I agree. Um, and now, you know, I and there's nothing in the pipeline for the next three years as far as new development. So it's it's like almost read, a perfect you've read storm. The Miami report cover to cover. Yeah, it's you it's really almost have. a perfect storm because it's 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 attracting a lot of people down to Miami, a lot of people, a lot of young professionals, and a lot of high earning individuals that are coming down. And when the New Yorkers get you on the phone, they must love having they somebody love, from New York right. that understands exactly what they don't know. So you can calm right. them down right. with uh, with a lot of the information that you have at your fingertips. Exactly. It's not just, uh, Miami is not your grandparents' retirement home anymore. And it's not a place to, just to vacation. Still is a great vacation spot, but it's become a lot more than that, I think. You see, so do, what do you see in 2021? A continuation? Of I see a continuation and acceleration, really. Once, you know, once get over this hump of the COVID, I think you're going to see a lot more businesses tr relocating down here. Um, I think you're going to, the demand is just going to keep kind of going up. Uh, we've seen. And you're it. talking mostly domestic demand. Yeah, domestic demand. Because listen, before you started here, I can tell you that domestic demand was was right. was here, but it was it was it was pretty much at a benign pace. Right. It was, Latin it was all Latin America, right. Mexico, Central America, and all of South America, and then the Caribbean. That now has kind of sobered up because of the high value of the U.S. dollar. It's not because they don't love Miami, right. trust me, Chris. They love they, it as much as you and I'm I. I'm sure. But it's been replaced by the Northeast migration, right? And uh, high taxes and and COVID and yeah. It's driving them here. And I think that's great. Numbers. I think that's great. I think it's going to add a different uh, component to Miami, where it's, you know, Burkle, banks, the concentration of banks in Burkle alone and financial institutions, I think it's it's going to add a huge component. It, it will. It has a lot of credibility to what Miami really right. is. And, yep. Now, Absolutely. let me take you back. Final question. Mm -hmm. Let me take you back about six months. You're in quarantine. You've never, because you, you have a young real estate career. Right. Don't think I'm not jealous of the fact that you're <laughs> half my age. Um, probably even less than half my age. But when you're in quarantine, you're feeling headwinds. There's right. nothing you can do. You can't leave your house. You can't show somebody a condominium because the condominium associations won't let you in. Right. That's called a headwind. That's a setback. But you had a long conversation with yourself or several conversations with yourself. Yeah. What are those conversations that Chris has with Chris? to get Chris through headwinds that you experience, whether it's your personal life, quarantine, other things that happen. This is what we call the golden nugget. It's a great question. Um, so, I mean, there's a few, I mean, a few parts to that. I think one of the main things is when I'm, you know, hit those times where you don't wanna, you know, you go through failures in this business. I mean, yeah. more than anything else, um, it's really just going back to, to why I really started getting into this industry, and it's it's to break the mold of you know my parents came here as as young immigrants from where uh, Ecuador. Oh, okay. So you know br breaking the mold and, and 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 creating something something better. I have nieces and nephews, and I'm sure eventually I have kids too. But you know br creating for sure. Yeah, <laughs> creating you know a, a more opportunity for for that next generation of, of mine. You know that that's coming, and I, and then the other part of that is. The satisfaction of, of you know when I close a deal with a client and, and they're they're very happy because one of the things I learned is is if you put your client's interests before yours it really it's like a snowball effect of of lifetime business and lifetime relationships that you that Chris what you just said please promise me you'll never forget that because that's yeah that, that is kind of like a golden rule yeah I I, I I sold a guy a very expensive condo years ago. And he knows that I'm running ISG and related to ISG. And he gave me some words of wisdom. He said, stop chasing money. You scare money when you chase money. 
just do the best job you can for your clients and the money will follow. You kind of more or less just said the same thing. And at your young age, don't ever forget that. You'll share it with your nieces and nephews. You'll share this wisdom with your children. Right. Um, and your colleagues are really nice. Jeez, trust me, it matters. And believe me, I understand the feeling yeah. of selling a home to somebody and you know they're so friggin' happy yeah. but you also sold a home. Right. And, and what a feeling. Right. Huh? And I think that's the passion. I think yeah. that's really where it comes down to. Once you're passionate about something, it becomes more than about the money. I'd rather leave a deal on the table and, you know, that I know it's going to be a bad deal for my client than have to just force a deal to close. And I know it's not going to work out in the long run for my client. Chris, you're a future leader in this business. Thank man. you, Craig. You I really appreciate are. you having me. Yeah, you truly are. Thank I'm you. I'm so happy with Related yeah, ISJ. I'm happy to be here. No, it's great. It's wonderful to have no, you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Guys, um, this was remarkable. And uh, get to know this young man. He's got, he's got the stuff. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in again. And I don't know where Carolina Gertz wants us next week, but wherever she wants us next week, we'll see you then. Take care. <laughs>